Blessings. Blessings, goddesses and gods, kings. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, wow. Bear with me, please. Awesome. Yes. And we're back in full effect. Sorry, just trying to adjust because we had a little malfunction just a moment ago. Okay, guys, so thank you so much for tuning in um i can't thank you guys enough to always you know if you are followers or you know women or men that continue to come on womb wellness wednesdays i thank you very much for that for those who are new welcome uh, wednesday is a day that we come together and we talk a lot about the reproductive system and you know what's going on and the, the the pros and the cons and um the issues that women face on a daily basis um and how it stems from the womb the reproductive system the hormones and that type of thing if you are following cosmic woman thank you if you are not following vagina lady i ask you to do so and if you are already thank you Tonight, we are really talking about infertility. And I find that a lot of my clients, that is really their main goal. Their main goal is about fertility and getting pregnant and giving themselves or their spouse or the both of them this child that they've never had or children that they've never had. So we're going to focus a lot about infertility in itself and just kind of you know get to the nitty-gritty of it all of course usually of course as usual I would like to start with prayer and from there we will get into everything that we need to get into when it comes to infertility so you can bow your head close your eyes do what you would usually do for prayer and I will lead the prayer Dear God, we come to you right now just grateful and thankful for the life that we have. So many lives have been lost in the past month, week, days. We thank you for our lives and we ask you for protection emotional, mental, physical protection. We also pray for healing, healing from the mental, the emotional, the physical, the spiritual aspect of ourselves, allowing us to remove the things that are no longer needed in our lives. We ask you to help us embrace the things that will make us be the best versions of ourselves. Amen. Okay. So, infertility. Infertility, infertility in itself can be really, really broad. And the reason why it can be broad is because there are many things that will be create an impact almost on fertility one of the things primarily that is an issue when it comes to fertility is detoxing 
Now, no matter how often you come and listen to me, maybe um, on a live, maybe live, maybe at a workshop, maybe anywhere, the thing that I'm going to tell you mostly is you definitely want to detox. And you don't just want to detox the, the colon and the liver and those types of things, but you want to detox the entire body. But in turn, you also want to make sure that in that detoxing phase, you do not remove the good bacteria that is in the body. And that's really important because we need that good bacteria. So detoxing really helps with the fertility aspect. Because a lot of times, I mean, the reason why we are, we have fertility issues is because of hormonal issues. And a lot of those hormonal issues stem from digestive issues. There are times that I have clients, right? And they will come to me and when I look at their sheet, uh, when I look at their file, right, what they have filled out, everything looks pretty normal, you know, like there are no real red flags. But when you look deep, you find that there are red flags. And the red flags are usually from a digestive standpoint. Maybe it's the kidneys. Maybe it's the liver. Maybe it's the, I don't know, intestines, large intestines, small intestines, whichever they are. A lot of times it's from the digestive standpoint. There is so much waste and toxins that is stored in that area that doesn't allow the hormones to be able to develop, produce, or maybe, you know, the waste in itself creates this issue where the body in itself cannot function, the system in itself alone cannot function the way that it should. So if we're going to go into fertility, or infertility, which I hate that word because of course there's so much negativity towards that. But if we're going to go into fertility or infertility, we have to definitely look at the digestive system and what is really going on there. What is happening? Um, how is the body processing food? How is it releasing toxins? We want to focus on that. Another issue that we have when it comes to infertility, other than, you know, this whole toxins slash waste issue, is also just the natural hormonal issue or the hormonal imbalance. And the hormonal imbalance stems from so many different conditions. When a woman, um, you know, texts me or, or WhatsApps me or calls me and she says, oh, I have hormonal issues or hormonal imbalance. That's like, I still know nothing. I still have no understanding of what's going on in your reproductive system with you telling me you have hormonal balance, imbalance. There are so many different hormonal issues that you can have. There's so many different hormones in itself that can be elevated or that can be decreased or whatever the case is that doesn't allow me personally to be able to have an understanding that, oh, that's your issue. Okay, well, this is what you need to do. I can't do that because having... Hormonal imbalance is very, very vague, extremely vague. So it's not just about hormonal imbalance. And I want to break this down in terms of hormonal imbalance. So we have hormonal issues. What do we have? We have fibroids. A lot of women suffer from fibroids. 
we have cis. And these are like simple cis, right? We also have um, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a different type of cis. We have endometriosis. We have andenmyosis, which is what I had. There are a lot of reproductive issues that stem from hormonal issues. So we then need to get into the nitty gritty of what is my issue. Is my estrogen too high? Is my estrogen too low? Is my testosterone too high for a woman is my testosterone too low what is going on with my hormones and how now do I fix it and this is what's important because we really really need to have an understanding of what's going on inside of our bodies so if you have an issue like endometriosis that is an estrogen driven condition if you have cysts, that is also an estrogen condition. If you have something like fibroids, that is also an estrogen condition. So just those three conditions, which are actually probably the most popular ones of all, all stem from a high estrogen rate. So we need to now look at our estrogen level and what's really happening. What's really going on with our estrogen? Because even these women that suffer from things like, oh, they're, they're, you know, they get a lot of breakouts, their skin is not the same. This is estrogen, high estrogen. That's what happens. Right now, I actually have a peel on my face. <laughs> That's literally peeling at the moment. Like it's slowly. I haven't really started to peel yet. So I haven't started to look like a hot mess. So when you guys see me looking like a hot mess, don't judge me, okay? Just know that I am doing a little peel to remove some of the dead skin to revitalize. Moving on. So when we get into this type of um, hormonal imbalance and we start looking at things like... Um, endometriosis and cysts and fibroids and all of these things we have to get also to the root of the issue and the root is always a hormonal issue it's always what hormone is too abundant and with the majority of them what is abundant is estrogen what's in estrogen because if your body is full of estrogen, then you definitely don't need to be eating estrogen, right? Like at all, like you don't, that doesn't need to be in your diet whatsoever. So what really is estrogen? Or what, what are the foods that contain estrogen? Soy has estrogen. A lot of the chicken, a lot of the beef, dairy, Guys, these things have so much estrogen. So be aware. Don't eat, don't drink as much things that would have dairy. Look at the smoothies even that you buy on the road. A lot of times they have dairy in them. It blows my mind. You know, I go, I go to the store and I'm like, okay, I want to order a number two, which has like all of these things that talk about you know, antioxidants and this and that and kale and, and all this goodness. And then at the end of it, there is milk, cow's milk, not even almond milk, not any other kind of more of a not healthier milk, but dairy, cow's milk. And that just kills me. So guys, please look, look at the things that you're buying, because a lot of the times it's the foods is the things that we're digesting that's really creating an issue. So we have to look into that. When I think about infertility, I think a lot about like sadness. And I'm, I'm not sure if you guys might think that that is kind of like depressing or what, but I feel sadness because 
there's so many women that suffer from infertility and the ones that I feel even more sad for and this is a no judgment zone as you all know the ones I feel more sad for are the ones that got pregnant when they were 15 and 16 and 18 they had an abortion and now they're 29 35 42 and they're trying to get pregnant and it can't happen and that woman just sits there and she's just like it's because I had that abortion that's why I can't get pregnant that's why you know that's this is my curse and women sit there thinking about that on a daily basis about how it was their fault why now they can't get pregnant and those are the women that I I feel for more than any other because that has nothing necessarily to do with the fact unless you were butchered okay and don't get me wrong there are some women that go for an abortion god forbid not promoting it just being realistic that go for an abortion and they are butchered that is a sin that is horrible i mean my heart goes out to that woman but for the most part that is usually not the reason why usually what the reason why is the after effect what did you do after you went through this abortion did you go on birth control and you know did you take the morning after pill every time you had sex like what happened why now we're at this place because a lot of times there are things that happened the body spoke to you symptoms were there and the symptoms were ignored so i hate to say the word infertility because me personally you know me i like to be like fertility trying to be positive about the situation but the lack of fertility is very sad to so many women out there we're in april now endometriosis month just ended and the amount of women that i came across that are so saddened by the fact that they cannot conceive a child even though maybe their mate might have a child or children they cannot give their mate a child and it's just so sad to me and it's so sad to themselves and it's so depressing and usually what i try to tell those clients is sound therapy color therapy definitely the way to go allowing to heal the subconscious releasing the trauma the stress the hurt the pain and being able to then go and function it's probably the best thing for you if you guys are ever interested in any kind of sound therapy color therapy please contact us any kind of therapy i mean we got you any kind of therapy um from a holistic standpoint but sound therapy and color therapy are really important it is i mean dirt cheap at this point so take advantage of that uh and there is a lot of healing that happens not just mentally not just emotionally but definitely as well physically so i would definitely suggest that um you guys take heed to that and and use that you know use it it's happening at the moment you know it's there it's available so we spoke a lot about waste and how waste can throw off the hormones which then can you know make fertility or infertility an issue we also talked about estrogen and how estrogen that the heightness of estrogen can also create an issue in terms of infertility another thing that i want to speak about is our fallopian tubes and it's so funny because <laughs> A lot of people don't talk about the fallopian tubes, you know, like we forget like it's there. Like we're reminded that, yeah, the ovaries are there because we talk about cysts and we talk about fib we talk about cysts, we talk about 
polycystic ovarian syndrome, we talk about the lack of ovulation, but we don't talk about the tubes. And the tubes are important. And it's the tubes really that um, help us with ovulation. So we have to be focused on the tubes. I have so many clients that come to me and they're just like, my tubes are blocked. I can't afford IVF or I've tried IVF or I'm going to do IUI or whatever the case, or I did the surgery to flush it or whatever it is that they do for the tubes. Your tubes, your fallopian tubes are one of the most delicate aspects of your self know that so i don't want you doing surgery for your tubes i don't want you doing flushing for your tubes i just want your tubes to naturally be flushed in its own way without any surgery may that be a minor surgery or a major surgery so When we look at tubes, a lot of times they talk about the blockage and how blocked the tubes might be. Or um, maybe they talk about things like um, they've had no ectopic pregnancies and so now they only have one tube. One tube is really all you need. Realistically. Now, is that what we want? To only just have one tube? No, because we're born with two. Like, we want two. But know that one tube is still enough. It's still enough. What we want to do is heal the tube or tubes that we have. Now, has anybody ever thought about... What blocks your tube? Like what is in the tube? Why now it's blocked? That no, I can't ovulate. That no, it can't be sent through. No, all these things can't happen. Like what's happening? What is blocking it? And a lot of times when we look into it, it's usually three things. Plaque. Mucus, scar tissue. Usually it's one of the three. You might find yourself where, you know, there is something else that's blocking it. Whatever that could be. But for the most part, it is usually mucus. Or it is scar tissue. Or it is plaque. That's usually what it is. So... We have to find ways to remove the scar tissue, the plaque, the mucus. How do we do that? And there are many different ways to do that. And there are ways to do that. Please know that. There are ways to heal, to remove, to flush the tube in terms of removing scar tissue plaque or um, mucus. Most times mucus is the issue. I would say after that, maybe we'll get into scar tissue. We don't usually find a lot of plaque in the tube, but it definitely is possible. So we want to make sure that no matter what it's blocked with, that we can remove whatever it's blocked with to create fertility. As you guys know, I use herbs, vitamins, minerals, the works to balance the hormones, to heal the reproductive system, to do all these things. 
It is possible. I did it. I healed my reproductive system just using natural methods. Just deciding to in myself that, listen, this route, this medical route is not working. It's not working. And I've had patience, years of patience. What I find is an issue is when we get into the holistic aspect and are seeking healing from the holistic aspect, we don't have as much patience. I don't know what that's about. I mean, that's probably subconscious. Subconscious. We don't really realize that that's really what we're doing. But we are. There is a lack of patience that happens. And with holistic and natural healing, we need patience. Just the patience that we need to make a flower or a plant grow from a seed to know a plant that has roots and branches and leaves is the same patience that we need. We've got to think about that. We've got to embrace that. It's a part of it. Now I'm going to look into any questions that we have right now. Um, so that we can just get into any real individual questions. I'm going down the lane. Missing Q right now, by the way, guys. Big up to Q. Yes, infertility is definitely really sad. You know, I agree 100%. Um, and scar tissue is a lot of times the reason why infertility is not happening. So we definitely want to not just soften scar tissue, but remove the scar tissue. That's important. An HSG test. HSG test is what you want to do. So if you decide that you are trying to get pregnant, okay, and it's not happening, I suggest two things. Two things. An ultrasound and an HSG test. The ultrasound will be able to tell us what's going on with your uterus and your kidneys and your bladder and all of that. And a HSG test will allow us to know what's going on with your tubes. It's important. If you come to me, I am still going to want that even though I'm from a holistic standpoint. Because I need to know what is going on. So that's just something that you guys need to definitely look into. Um, now, having something like PCOS, right, polycystic ovarian syndrome, you can have a normal period after or having that. And I have a lot of clients that have a normal period with PCOS. Um, it is more about once you can balance the hormones you can't really consider yourself someone who has pcos because your estrogen level isn't as high you're now ovulating you're now having a period every month and so now you're kind of out of that realm of pcos out of that category and now in a category of having a normal period and that is more than possible no means about that How does stress affect the womb? Stress affects the womb 100,000%. Stress in itself affects the entire body. Stress can actually kill you. Drop you dead. When the womb is the second heart of the woman. And so when it comes to that... Anything we do, any feeling that we have, the womb is affected. 
It's affected mentally, physically. It's affected. The womb in itself is so affected. So, with it being affected, things are going to happen like hormonal imbalance. Um, your womb is going to become heavy. It's going to drop down on your pelvic floor. Um, you and yourself will become angry and miserable. And it's so funny because I walk around on a daily basis, right? Sorry, excuse me. I'm just adjusting myself. I walk around on a daily basis just taking in women. And there are so many women that their demeanor comes across so angry, so aggressive, so all of that. And the reason why is because their womb isn't healed. It's, it's stressed. It's hurting. It needs healing. There's no reason that we as women should be walking around and being angry at someone that has nothing to do with your daily life, your issues, <laughs> your stresses. Why is this person involved? What is really what is re, what is really happening? So for us to be able to make, you know, blame someone else for our anger and our stresses on top of the fact that we're angry and we're stressing, it takes a toll on the womb. The womb being the uterus. And then the womb being the entire reproductive system. Because the hormones get shifted. If you're in a good mood and a happy mood, your hormones are shifted in a certain way. If you're miserable and stressed and annoyed and aggravated, your hormones are going to be shifting to another way. It's just science. It's just what it is. So we have to be aware of those things. Simple cysts. Okay, so simple cysts are no different from PCOS in terms of it's still a high estrogen situation. What do we do? And with a high estrogen situation, we have to make sure that we're not eating foods that have estrogen and we're not putting things in our bodies that have estrogen. The things that could have estrogen, estrogen could be things we wash our hair with, things we put in our face, things we put in our mouth. Look into the things that you're using on a daily basis. I'm looking at a question right now and they're saying they got pregnant after after surgery. I'm assuming that, I'm not sure what surgery that was. Got pregnant about 20 times, all ended in miscarriages. Okay. So, usually when a woman has a miscarriage like that on a regular, regular basis, it's two issues. It's hormonal or it is the uterus and the lining of the uterus is just not healthy enough or it is hormones or it is waste. So please look into that. Look into what's going on. Look into what you've been through so that you can kind of come to a conclusion of what that might, could be, what that might be. If you need my help, of course, you guys know you can send me a message set a consultation and we can work that out herbs can shrink a cyst no matter how big it is it's not just about herbs if your shrink is seven centimeters or if your cyst is 10 centimeters or if your cyst is two centimeters you have to change your diet there's no if ands or buts about it you have to change your diet your diet is 50% of your issue. Moving on. If you want to know how to, if you have fibroids, you need to do an ultrasound. 100%. What causes scar tissue? Okay, so scar tissue can be caused by many things. Scar tissue can be because of a surgery and there is no a scar, so there is no scar tissue. Scar tissue can be created from endometriosis, which we know um, of, of as a reproductive issue. Most times, that's where that is. 
Polycystic ovarian syndrome doesn't usually come with painful sex. Not usually. But it is possible, but it's not a usual thing. So there could be another underlined issue why you're having painful sex. If your both tubes are blocked, we have to unblock at least one for you to get pregnant. You will not get pregnant with two blocked tubes unless you did IVF. And IVF doesn't always work. So I always recommend doing some kind of treatment before you do IVF or IUI. Okay, so someone was asking about the fact that they drank red raspberry and they had their period and the period was very dark and full of clots and if that's a good thing. Every woman should be on red raspberry. The fact that you've never done it before and you're doing it now and now that you're doing it, it is creating some kind of healing. So there's releasing clots, there's releasing extra old blood that's happening. That's great. What I do want at the end of the day is to make sure that your period is pink, light red, or bright red. That's the color of a period that I want. That shows me that it is fresh, clean blood. It's hard for you to know if there is a difference between scar tissue and mucus in terms of the fallopian tubes. Um, other than if you've never had, let's say you've never had a surgery and you don't suffer from endometriosis, then most likely it's plaque or it is mucus. If you suffer from endometriosis, then most likely it is scar tissue. It could also be mucus. If you suffer from PCOS and your tubes are blocked and you've never had a surgery, most likely that is because of mucus. High prolactin levels. Okay, well, I definitely recommend a lot of reflexology. Um, so I definitely recommend if you have high prolactin levels, send me a DM message, okay? I definitely have some things that I can give you and things that I can tell you to do um, to help that, okay? Ref a lot of reflexology is really good um, for high prolactin levels and definitely removing the waste. So amazing. Love you, baby. Um, guys, anybody who is on here um, that usual that is in Florida, okay, of course, we know the COVID thing is going on right now, but is in South Florida, you have to hit up my friend Jen, okay? She is amazing for peels. By the way, Jen, I got a peel done like a couple of days ago, and um, it's like slowly peeling away little by little. You realize how my face is looking. Um, but it's great to be able to remove different things from our bodies we're talking about inside our bodies we also want to talk about our skin as well and jen and i will be having a live one of these days to talk about the actual skin because the skin is the largest organ of the body and we should really have an understanding of what we're doing or what we could be doing that we didn't realize we're doing that's harming our skin or vice versa so that will be great What causes fluids in the womb? Well, I mean, many things can cause fluid in the womb. Many things can cause the womb to be an issue. Um, a lot of times what happens is a lot of the blood isn't released during the period. And that's what causes the issue in terms of the fluid. Uh, if you also have a disease called anden meiosis, like what I had, that also causes a lot of fluid in the womb as well. So those are things that you kind of want to look at. For someone with PCOS has a normal period, how they who do how do they know if they ovulate? Okay, so in anyone anyone in general, when it comes to ovulation, what is important is for us to look okay, so number one, every woman should have an app on their phone that they can put in their period when it came, when it left. Usually with most of these apps, they also have the ovulation aspect of it. And it will tell you, it will like kind of guess when you should be ovulating. 
normally <laughs> normally a woman ovulates 12 to 18 days after her period for me for example and i can only speak of myself I ovulate like four to five days after my period. So right after my period, it's like, baby, it's time to make that baby type of situation. So I am different, which means that every woman is different. So you have to definitely look at, does this fit for you? When it comes to ovulation, there are things that we should know uh, in terms of looking at our, looking at our ovulation. Um, are we, are we having discharge? Uh, are we feeling a little bit more horny than we usually like sexually? Uh, are we, are we having any, not just discharge, but is there anything else that's happening? Is our temperature because temperature is huge. You know, the temperature can, can go up slight. Um, which shows that we're having, we're going through ovulation period and it can also like raise a lot. Uh, so it's really hard to tell. There's a special thermometer actually that you can use to really pinpoint those types of things. If you want to look at ovulation, there are also things that you can pee on to check, to see, am I ovulating or am I not ovulating? So that is also an option. So please make sure you do that. For my clients, usually we start from the element and then we move forward in terms of trying to figure out when ovulation is happening, if it's happening. And if it's not, then of course we do things to make sure that ovulation is happening. Having a normal period PCOS but still not getting pregnant. Okay, so you could be having a period but you could still not be ovulating. So look into the ovulation, okay? I have another person that's asking, okay, I did an ultrasound, I did sonogram, I did all the fertility blood tests. Now they said that I should do a HSG test, but I always see something around in my vagina when I'm taking a shower and I wash. Okay, so... I st if you're trying to get pregnant, you have to do a HSG test. Don't even go around it. Just get it done. Get it the hell done. Because knowing what's going on with your ovaries is going to help with us being able to get you pregnant. Or yourself. Get yourself pregnant. Okay? You want to know what's going on with your tubes. 100%. Ovulation should occur every single period. After every period, you should ovulate. Maybe five days after, 10 days after, 20 days after, you should definitely, definitely be ovulating. How do, you re how do we reduce stress when it relates to the womb? I always use sound therapy, color therapy. If that is something you're interested in, please send me a DM and just let me know, hey, I'm interested in this. Um, in learning ways to heal stress, trauma, emotions. Um, can you send me the sound therapy, color therapy? We'll email it to you. It's not a big deal, um, but it can do so much healing. So if it's something you're interested in, please reach out to us because we will definitely send it out. I have a fiber the size of a five-month-old fetus. My question is is will I lose my womb? I was told that I might have to remove it. No, don't ever remove your womb if you don't need to. If it doesn't have cancer in it, there's no reason to have to remove it. That's just my that's just my being. They told me I had to remove mine as well at 29. So I don't really fall, I don't really fall for that kind of thing. Uh, if you do have a fibroid, there are things that you have to change, okay? Uh, hormonal wise, we have to fix the hormones. We have to lower the estrogen level. We also have to make sure that we're creating a lot more circulation. We're giving you some iron. We're not feeding the fiber to make it grow more, but we're shrinking it. So we have to focus on a few different things. But if you're interested in my help, please contact me uh, so I can help because I would love to, if possible.
why is there a stain of blood after sex? Um, I don't think most people experience a stain of blood after sex. Um, for some women, that's the case. Um, and I would say that their vaginal wall, wall is a little inflamed, why that is happening. But that should not be the case. You should be able to have sex and there is no stain, no spotting, no nothing after sex. If you're still having that, please contact me because we definitely need to do something about that. What is my approach on females not getting pregnant, but the doctor says that there is nothing wrong? What do I offer men? Okay, so a lot of times when I find women that have gone through everything, can't get pregnant, no one can find out why it is they're not getting pregnant, a lot of times I fear realize that it is their kidney, their liver, and their waste issue that creates an issue why pregnancy is not happening and usually once we do something about that pregnancy happens it's as easy as that how do i find balance <laughs> Guys, I'm trying to figure out balance every single day. I am no expert on balance. I am still trying to figure it out. Um, and I guess because life changes and shifts and, you know, like, you think that you're getting balance now and you're kind of, like, going in it with it. And then all of a sudden, things like the COVID-19 happens and it just totally shifts everything that it was that you were planning or doing or preparing for. Um... So, I don't know. I mean, I guess we're always still always trying to find balance. I think balance is something that we should always be craving. We should always be searching for. Because balance is important. We need it. So, yeah. It's, it's something that I always have to continuously do. I, do. I do affirmations in the morning. I do prayer. I do um, meditation in the morning. Most mornings I stretch, some mornings I don't stretch, just depending on the time I woke up and what's going on. But balance is important. Um, I've even told myself that after this COVID-19 thing ends, I have to take one day a week and just get away. Like, just get away from everything. Get away from everyone. Like, you know, find a place on the beach where no one is. You know, there's no one else but me. Um, sit down in my car for four hours, just like sitting, just finding time to just give to self that has nothing to do with Cosmic Woman, nothing to do with being the mother of Reagan, Royce, Rohan, you know, nothing to do with anything. Just being. And it's important. And I'm trying and I'm learning to it's a it's it's a journey guys I don't have it all um, sorted out but I definitely use sound therapy color therapy and a few other things um, along with just removing removing the fuckery and let's just keep this real guys sometimes you just need to remove the foolishness that's in your life that's creating this stress the trauma, the annoyance, even though it is what you know. And sometimes the fear is to go with something that you don't know or to not have what you know. But a lot of times it is what is creating half the freaking stress. Remove it. I have been spending two to three months removing all the fuckery. And embracing the things that make me me and make me happy and make me the best version of myself. And I, I, I pray and I hope for you guys that you guys will do the same as well. Um, and maybe you're far beyond that than I am in terms of that. Um, and if so, my, my hat goes out to you 100%. Um, do I heal PCOS? Um, I, I wouldn't say I heal it. I would say I, I give the guidance 
that would be needed um i give some recommendations and it is the it is the goddess it is the woman that heals herself and she needs to know that every woman that has become pregnant that has tried for years that whatever that comes to me she has healed herself for those that have shrinked cysts and fibroids and all these other things she has healed herself i was just there for the ride and so grateful so grateful for that alina hi my darling um what about a blood issue okay so in terms of blood issues of course so that blood issues are going to affect our immune system which then is going to affect our gut okay and usually if we have blood issues we have a gut issue so we want to make sure that we're healing the gut we're giving the gut good bacteria we're removing the negative bacteria and we are feeding it um, not just blood foods, but cleaning the blood, cleaning the blood in a healthy way. So things like burdock root would be amazing for, um, for cleaning the actual blood itself. Um, food or diets, removing, you know, of course, if you remove diet, um, meat from your diet, that would be amazing. Of course, that would do, um, 100,000% better than eating meat and trying to heal that situation so i would definitely suggest that um any type of blood issue can affect um a miscarriage it's it is it is and when i say that yes any kind of blood issue but also any issue that is going to stem from the gut and a blood issue stems from the gut so we want to make sure, again, that the good bacteria is more abundant than the bad bacteria so that our gut can be healthy. We want to clean our blood so the blood itself can be healthy. We want to give our body a lot of iron, okay, because that is important. Um, and depending on what else is going on or what your blood type is, you might need other things. Uh, but... In infertility or miscarriages can definitely happen uh, because of a blood condition or a immune or digestive condition okay coffee in itself all right so coffee in terms of estrogen coffee doesn't have estrogen coffee has caffeine and a lot of times caffeine affects other things like your endocrine system. So we want to look on that because a lot of times when we look at infertility, we don't look at the other aspect, which is the endocrine system, which is a, which is a part of the hormonal aspect, right? So the thyroid and that kind of thing is all connected with infertility or the reproductive system per se. So it's important for us to make sure that we're keeping that healthy. We're having enough iodine in our body so that we don't have an endocrine system issue as well. But if you are trying to get pregnant, caffeine might not be the best thing um, if it has been difficult for you to get pregnant. But a lot of times caffeine is not the main issue. There are other issues um, and caffeine is probably like a subfolder of the situation is metformin be bad for the womb oh i hate metformin guys i hate metformin like i absolutely hate it it is you know it's not even for the womb right you guys know this like like metformin is not even for the digestive system like at all like it is something for like diabetes or something like that like no I hate it. I hate it. If you have PCOS, metformin is not the answer. Please send me a message. Please let me help you. Metformin is not it. And you feel horrible on metformin. Like, ugh. You feel horrible. Please don't do it. Don't do it to yourself. It's not worth it. Uh, someone's asking, I did a lot of ultrasounds and they said that I have multiple cysts on my left ovary. Okay, so multiple cysts could mean that you have PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome which means you have poly you have many cysts on your on your ovary 
or it could mean that you have many simple cysts on your ovary. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I can tell you that your estrogen level is way too high. So we need to, we need to lower it for sure. Um, Ramon is saying she had two miscarriages and then found out that a tube is blocked and trying to get pregnant again. Okay. So if you have a blocked tube, we definitely want to do something about that. We can do natural things about that. So don't feel like there are not natural things to be done. Send me a message. I can create a treatment plan for you. We can break down whatever it is that's blocking the tube. If there's damage to the tube, we can also do something about that. Okay? Don't do surgery for it. I'm telling you, the scar tissue does not help. You will end up having to do IVF. There will be no if, ands, or buts about it. So don't do that. Um... How do you know when your tubes are blocked? You got to do an IVF, um, a HSG test, okay? HSG test will let us know exactly what's going on with the tube. If you have multiple cysts on your ovary, you can get pregnant, but it's going to be harder to get pregnant on that side. Um, and if that side is the only side that you're ovulating from, then that creates an issue. So you want to do something about that. If you have a cyst on any ovary, you want to remove that. Even if you're not trying to get pregnant, you want to get rid of that. I have abnormal hormones. My menstrual cycle doesn't flow normal. Okay, so if it doesn't flow normal, then we need to get your period regulated. If your period is not regulated, that then is going to mean that you are not ovulating okay what if your period has always been moderate changing three to four moderate pads each day lasting six to seven days but has now gone down using light pads where little to no blood is coming okay so that can be many different things a lot of times when our period becomes less and less it is a sign that things are happening that is a positive thing. There is healing happening. Sometimes when our periods are becoming less and less, it is a thing saying this is premenopausal or your period is coming to an end. That type of thing. Your hormones are really off. I would not be able to tell you where you are in that, from that retrospect without knowing more. But what I could say to you is, what are your periods like? Are they painful? Are they a breeze? Depending on that, it will allow us to kind of get a better understanding of is this a healthy reason why your period is lighter or is this an abnormal, unhealthy reason why the period is not coming heavier? I did surgery about three years ago and removed fibroids. I now have cysts. I st still see a period every month. I have been trying to get pregnant for a year. No success. Okay, so when we cut out cysts, when we cut out fibroids, when these things happen, a lot of times the environment that caused this did not change. And because the environment did not change, these things come back. So if we're going to cut it out, if we're going to remove it, Nothing wrong with that. No judgment. But we have to do things to make sure that the environment changes. So what I would say is anyone that is suffering, you would need to definitely send me a message. I am closing off now, guys. Um, there are so many more questions. Send me a DM if you have any questions remaining. If you are following Cosmic Woman, please follow also the Vagina Lady. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Love and light to all of you. Blessings.